Hey everybody, James Jager with Tactical Response. After I did the uh, shotguns for home defense, I had a, a tremendous amount of people asking, you know, what about rifles? So let's uh, let's just talk about the home defense with a long gun uh, subject in a little bit deeper, uh, uh, with a little bit deeper look and uh, uh, some a little bit more information. Uh, rifles, I got it broken into two calibers, uh, two <laughs> two calibers, uh, two two categories for what, what I think you need to have and what I think is nice to have for a home defense rifle. Uh, I think the best home defense round is 5.56 millimeter. 5.56 millimeter, uh, the, the 223 5.56 round. Um, whatever round you have, okay, it's, it's, gonna, be, it's gonna be fine. Uh, but the reason I like 5.56, if you take a few minutes and look up on the net, um, high velocity uh, projectile um, fragmentation and deformation. Basically, what happens is that a, 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 a round will sit, the, this is the tip of the bullet, and this is the base of the bullet. Uh, when it comes out, any rifle round, because they're heavier at the back than they are at the front, it comes out and it's got about a one degree yaw. And what I mean is the back end of the bullet is doing this the whole time that thing's going down range. So it's doing that. Um, and uh, what happens is it's the first chance it gets. That, that that when it hits something, the first chance it gets that, that rear end goes forward. This is with, with any rifle round. So that's why hitting, uh, if you're hunting and you there's a tree branch between you and the deer or whatever the case may be, that's why it throws the bullet off because it's just looking for that edge to for that ass end to get around there. What happens in general with a 5.56 round like the XM193 and uh, and all you guys that want to talk about ballistics and tell me I'm wrong and stuff, I don't really care what you say. I, I've seen things with my own eyes. Um, if you could imagine doing a cross section of the bullet, uh, there's a cantilever across the middle, which is kind of like a wall of copper. You got lead in the back and lead, lead in the front, and then of course a copper jacket over the back. When that hits something, that the front end of that bullet dissolves, it breaks into pieces, it shatters. <clears throat> That's the fragmentation aspect of it. And then as soon as it hits something and that happens, the back end goes, aha! <laughs> And now it starts doing this. And this is where people talk about the 5.56 round tumbling. Uh, some people think that it tumbles just through the air as it's traveling. No, it's when it, when it hits something, boom, uh, it begins this. And this is part of the high, high velocity projectile uh, fragmentation and deformation. Uh, so that front end does that, and then from the cantilever back, it starts doing this through soft tissue. That's what, that's what makes a 5.6 round in that comfort that configuration lethal. Now the green tip, the SS-109, uh, in the front part of the bullet has steel. And it's not a penetrated round, it's not It's not armor piercing, it's just steel. Um, it's a 63 grain steel bullet. And it's not armor piercing and it does not do the fragmentation anymore, which it makes it the worst of both worlds. It's not as good as like XM-193 ball and it doesn't penetrate like, like an like a, a armor piercing round. So you have the worst uh, of both aspects of those bullets. That's why in Mogadishu, uh, Black Hawk Down, that's why there were so many reports of those rounds not working, just po just poking holes in people, is because it wasn't doing what it was designed to do. When they put that steel core in there, it changed the entire dynamics of the of the thing. So let me uh, let me say one more thing: frangible ammunition. I hear people talking about using frangible ammunition for home defense all the time, and frang true frangible ammunition. And I'm not talking about like the. Uh, the rounds that Corbaum makes, the you know the the, the old style with the the, the uh, uh, shot inside of it. I'm not talking about that. Uh, I'm talking about like uh, ammo that is made to shoot at steel. Um, and here's the deal: they, they, it's called frangible, but if you shoot anything other than steel with it, it is a penetrator round. It'll go through stuff. It'll go through a human body. Just poke a hole in it. It'll go through your house. And guys are you know when you shoot a, a steel target with it, it's a centered kind of a projectile and it turns to dust boom when you hit steel with it because you know it, that's what it's designed to do but if it doesn't hit something as hard as steel it just punches right through it and uh and so don't use that type of frangible ammunition for home defense ever 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 um so uh again to, to reiterate if you don't have a 5.56 gun you have a AK or you got a bolt action sorry <laughs> lever action you know model 94 Winchester or whatever it is that you got then by all means use it just understand that your round especially like a 7.62 AK round is very likely to go through um, 
uh, your, your entire house. It'll just zip, zip right through it. And uh, so, so please be careful. Uh, so um, that's why I choose the 5.56 um, for, for home defense with a rifle. Uh, I just think it it's, offers uh, the, uh, the best lethality with the, the, the lowest potential for overpenetration. Uh, I think you need to have a light on any gun that is used for home defense. Uh, most home defense shootings happen at night. We can name any number of scenarios where if the uh, if the defender would have had a light, he would not have shot the wrong person. Uh, any number of those things. So I believe that um, that uh, having a light on any gun, any long gun used for home defense, any handgun used for home defense, I believe that is a, a need to have need to have you need to be able to identify what you have and you know you shoot the wrong person especially if you shoot a friend or a family member or something like that it's, it's a you, you couldn't live with yourself you blow your brains out so a light is cheap insurance and again <clears throat> Uh, the only light that I would trust my life to is Surefire. I do have some Streamlight products, and I believe that Streamlight makes a great flashlight. I believe it's the second best tactical flashlight you can have. And now people are going to start saying, what about Phoenix? Phoenix is shit. You bolt that to a gun and see how long it lasts. Yeah, they're cheap, and yeah, they're bright, whatever. But I'm telling you, if you're, if you're, if it, when, when, when the stakes are high, Surefire is where it's at. Um, so, so let's talk about nice to have stuff and in no particular order nice to have stuff is an aim point some kind of red dot sight a quality red red dot sight which which I call an aim point uh, any one of their models is, is pretty good for, for home defense any one of their <laughs> let me rephrase that any one of their uh, um, like their their comp m comp m2 uh, the micros any of those standard you know zero parallax uh, are great uh, a sling a sling to a rifle is like a holster to a pistol, um, and here's what I hear guys say: is uh, that, that, like I don't want a sling in case I'm fighting with somebody. You know, I don't want to be trapped in that sling. Uh, okay, fine, but let's just pretend that maybe there's two guys breaking your house, and you got this long gun, and you're fighting over this long gun. If it is strapped to you, you can't be shot with it. Okay, maybe you can't shoot them effectively because they're, you're fighting, but certainly if it's tied to your body, they can, there's no way they can turn around and shoot you with it. Um, so, so that's something to consider. Uh, I think uh, a, a tactical sling is a very viable thing. You need to be in it because if it's just hanging off the rifle, it can catch on doorknobs and stuff like that. So either commit to it or don't, uh, whatever the case may be. A ready mag. Um, I, I don't like mag couplers that hold two mags. I, I, I've never found one that I really care for. But a ready mag that bolts to the gun, I believe, offers a lot of advantages. And think about it, you jump up in the middle of the night, you're, you're naked with a rifle, you know, you, that's, that's your reload. Now, the, the odds of you needing more than one fully loaded magazine um, <laughs> I mean, you'll be famous. You, you you go through two mags as a home defender, and uh, you're gonna be famous. That that's for sure. But uh, uh, the the most common malfunction for any semi-automatic firearms the problem the magazine having a magazine on board that you can replace it with and get get back in the fight. Uh, it w I think is a, a valuable thing. Uh, we'll talk about noise, and I got some pressure on that list, <laughs> or <laughs> or electronic ear protection. And here's what I mean. A lot of you guys have. Um, it, ear protection or electronic ear protection in your range bag between shooting sessions it just sits in your range bag what I'm going to encourage you to do is hang that thing on your rifle or hang that thing on your home defense shotgun and if something happens in the middle of the night get up boop, put those put those electric uh, ear protection on and I, and I recommend the um, the uh, Peltor sport tack they're around hundred and ten dollars I recommend those they have all the best features of the cheaper models and all the best features of the more expensive models and uh, the, the Comtax um, and uh, and for a home defender they're, they're fantastic so put that on you haven't heard loud until you light off any gun but let alone a long gun in a confined space and uh, it will rattle your cage and then boy and then you can't hear anything and then your ability to defend your family is greatly diminished because you can't hear what's going on people calling for help or or what, what have you so uh this is a very important one matter of fact i, I might even put that up with the uh need to have certainly ear protection let's go ahead and <laughs> let's go ahead and change it suppressor is nice to have uh, hearing protection is need to have even if it's just a regular old set of muffs your your ears are not going to be ringing after you shoot the guy so it's very important so 
Uh, rifles for home defense, uh, you have to be aware of shoot-through problems. Um, and what's funny is there are guys that, that argue with me on the on the shotguns for home defense because I say use buckshot, use slugs, whatever. Just you know, change your change your you know, the angle of your bullets or whatever you need to do. But I want to be able to shoot through shit uh, with mine. And there are going to be guys that come on here and disagree with me on this. And, and, and check it out, I don't care. I don't care what you people, you people that disagree with me, I don't care what you say. I, I, I have my own reality, my own truth, the things I've experienced, the gunfights I've been in, uh, people I've shot. I have my own view of the what, what works and what doesn't. Don't come on here and call me names because you don't agree with me, okay? Um, but at the end of the day, you know, um, what, what you train with and what you're good with is what really matters. And virtually any long gun is better than virtually any handgun in a gunfight. So, you know, take that to effect. I mean, I got, like, I'm not a fan of 22s for defense. I'm not. But somebody with like a Ruger 1022, uh, firing somebody up with that, you're, you're going to have better hits. And, you know, any hit with a 22 is better than any miss with a 45. Uh, so, uh, rifles for home defense, long guns in general for home defense. Remember, you shoot somebody with a long gun, they die. You shoot somebody with a handgun, they run away. And uh, what we want is to reduce our exposure to danger, like a like a nuclear blast and radiation. We want there that we just pretend that, that person that has invaded your home is is like radiation. And if you can't block yourself from radi radi radiation, then you reduce the amount of time you're exposed to that radiation. And what we want to do is reduce the amount of time we're exposed. I don't care if the guy runs away or if he dies, we just need him to not be a danger to our home or our family any longer. Um, if you want to talk more about this, join our forum, getoffthex.com, and you can discuss this uh, all you like. Uh, getoffthex.com uh, is a great forum with a lot of really smart guys. I encourage you to do that. If you want to learn how to use your rifle, come out and take our fighting rifle class, and we can show you how to play that thing like a violin. And uh, and I'm, I'm telling you that it, it'll it'll change your perspectives on how to use that rifle. Uh, look up our reviews, the course reviews, not only the ones that the, the videos that I have, but type in on the search tactical response and see the reviews of our classes that different people have. Uh, put on Zombie Tactics and Patriot, the Patriot Nurse, uh, Corey and Erica, uh, Tex Grabner. Woo, Tex, shooting himself in the butt. Uh, <laughs> just look, look us up and see what these other people are saying about our class. But I'm telling you, fighting rifle for if you have a gun for, uh, rifle for home defense, um, fighting rifle is a, absolutely a class that you need to have under your belt. This is James Jagger with Tactical Response. I do sincerely appreciate you watching. I certainly wish that you would subscribe to my channel. I certainly wish that you would share these videos with your friends and on forums and on your Facebook pages and stuff like that. You can keep up with me on my Facebook page and you can just type James Jagger in there and I'll, it'll, it'll pop up. Uh, James Jagger of Tactical Response. Uh, in the links below this uh, video, you can you can see our websites, the training website. We travel all over the country providing training for people all over the place where we have a traveling band of, of miscreants that just go around training good guys how to kill bad guys. Thanks again. Remember, your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends.